for coming in this morning. I know, you know, it, it's it's so different for everybody right now. I mean, so many guys are logged in right now and, and, and whether they're at home or, you know, sitting on the couch, kitchen table, whatever, like I am. But, but uh, you know, uh, big time college football uh, uh, still got a lot of work to do, right? I mean, there's always something to do. You guys are recruiting, you guys are doing all kinds of stuff. So we really appreciate your time, coach, coming on and, and, uh, and talking some ball with us. Um, uh, we'll, uh, we'll get you going here. And uh, guys, if, um, if, uh, if, uh, if you've got any questions, just use that chat function. Coach will keep going through his, through his deal and at his pace. And then uh, when, uh, when, when we can get chat, we get to the question, we'll, we'll take care of that. And coach, uh, coach will address any questions uh, as we go or at the end. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Coach. I, I appreciate you. Floor is yours, buddy. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Uh, do, do I have the screen now? Uh, I should be able to sh share your screen. Okay. There you go. You're going here. All right, perfect. You got it. All right, well, good. Well, hey, I appreciate the opportunity you, um, you've given me, Coach, to obviously come on. And, um, you know, I was once a high school uh, football coach myself, and I'm not too sure what the audience is um, that's on right now. But – uh, I'm assuming a lot of high school coaches are on here. Uh, like I said, I was once a high school coach. Um, so I appreciate you guys, um, you know, what you guys do and the amount of time you guys spend. Um, obviously, I, at the high school level, I mean, that's where the heart of, uh, you know, real football coaching is at because you're not really doing it for any type of money or any other type of material gain. It's more for the love of the game and obviously to help uh, young athletes and stuff like that. So I appreciate the uh, you guys uh, for all that you guys do. Uh, just real fast, um, as you can see here, this is kind of my agenda, that some of the things I want to kind of touch up on, a little bit of my experience, uh, my coaching philosophy, my mission statement. Uh, I think those are two key things uh, as a coach that you need to identify very quickly if you have not done so. Uh, that way, um, you know, you, your decision process, your choices you're going to make are going to be reflected off of obviously your philosophy and your mission statement. Uh, I'm going to go through kind of a, a, my teaching progression um, and then identifying drills to run, and then EDDs versus technique drills. I think there's a, a misconception as far as, hey, I'm going to do my everyday drills um, and do them every day, but you forget to do some of your technique drills that are more important because they're related to your scheme. Uh, and then afterwards, I'll kind of turn it over to a Q&A uh, to see if I can answer any questions for you guys. And then again, like we all know, uh, the game of football, there's different ways to skin a cat. Uh, and I'm just going to help uh, share with you guys what has helped me be successful as far as being a position coach um, at UCLA. So um, this is my experience here. Um, obviously, like I said, I was um, a high school football coach. I'm originally from Utah. I started coaching at Cottonwood High School. Uh, later on, I went to the University of Utah. Uh, from there, I kind of kick-started my coaching career as far as going to Weber State. Um, obviously, being let go of Weber State, being a graduate assistant at Brigham, uh, BYU, Brigham Young University. Um, and then uh, from there, going to Weber State and then, excuse my spelling, their University of Nevada. And then obviously, the UCLA. Uh, some of the defensive schemes that I have been around, uh, I've been around a 4-3. Uh, mainly Utah. I played at the University of Utah, so I'm very familiar with their defense. Um, I've been uh, at the University or Brigham Young University when Bronco Mendenhall was there. So that was kind of my introduction to a 3-4 scheme. And then while I was, the, while I was at the University of Nevada, uh, I was with Jeff Castile, which I'm sure some of you guys uh, there in Arizona are very familiar with. He was uh, spent a little bit of time when Coach Rodriguez was there at, at U of A. So that is kind of my background. Um, obviously, being a defensive coordinator at the FCS level, uh, I did run a 4-3 scheme. Uh, and like I said, 4-3 is my baby. 3-4, uh, obviously, with B BYU and then also at uh, University of uh, uh, UCLA. Um, and then we'll kind of go from there as far as any questions. So I just want to give a, a brief uh, background. All right. Uh, this is my philosophy, and I'm pretty sure it's – very similar to many of your guys's, right? And obviously we're in the business to so obviously help young men and uh, me having the background that I have, right? Um, growing up, not having much, having some older brothers who have obviously played at, at the next level. Um, but the neighborhood I grew up in and right in the impact that my high school coach uh, made on my life, obviously 
Um, the rest is history in terms of where I'm at today. Um, obviously, genuinely care. Obviously, we all know that obviously we showed that we care a lot about these players, uh, not only about how they perform on the football field, but obviously how they do off the field um, goes a long way. And then obviously, ultimately, I know our goal is obviously um, just making, you know, later on in life when they graduate, whether they go continue on to play or they don't. But obviously, our hope is obviously that they become better husbands, um, you know, fathers, um, so on and so on, that they can be a productive member of society. Okay. If I'm going too fast, just let me know. I just want to kind of get through this. I know this is a lot of stuff that, um, um, that many of us obviously adhere to. Uh, if you don't have a philosophy, I would say come up with a philosophy. Uh, this is my mission statement, right? And these are these three words here, elevate, inspire, and serve, um, is kind of what has got me here today. So uh, anyway, I want to elevate my players or any other coach that comes uh, in my path or that I come into contact to. Uh, same thing when I get an opportunity to speak at clinics, I'm, this is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to help elevate or enhance your guys' coaching experience so that way you guys can in turn uh, teach the same principles or whatever it may be to help elevate, inspire the young men that you guys are uh, in charge of. Um, same thing as far as serving, right, which we all know serving obviously in that leadership role to help our young men, um, help them see that serving is a positive thing where a lot of them see it as, oh, I'm too tired to go help somebody else. But we all know that obviously helping somebody else in return Right. It goes a long ways, not only for them individually, but uh, obviously for the team itself. Um, then obviously the Roy Disney quote that I'm sure everybody's heard of. It's not hard to make decisions when you know what your values are, obviously, whether it's a mission statement, what my values are. But just having a good concrete background of, hey, this is what I want to do as a position coach, as a defensive coordinator or even as a head coach. That way, everybody else that follows through or that follows behind you can follow through with uh, what your mission statement is, what your philosophy is, okay? All right, so let's get to the meat of the conversation, obviously with some uh, football stuff. And then, like I said, you can save your questions till afterwards and I can touch up on anything uh, that you guys want. Okay, so this is my teaching progression, right? So anytime I'm installing something, anytime I'm teaching something, I always fall back to this and then fall back into this order here, which we all know everything starts off with the stance. Right. And it doesn't matter if you're running backs, coach, DBs, coach, outside linebackers, coach, whatever it may be. Right. What is that stance? What does it look like? Right. Um, and then obviously you go into the fine details of those. Right. OK, what's my alignment? Right. And then understanding just my base alignments. Right. Get a gap responsibility, C gap responsibility. And everybody has a different numbering system as far as alignments go. Right. And I'll just show you what mine is. Right. And then assignment. Right. Now, this is important because once I go through all this, right, I'm going to connect all the pieces of the puzzle together for you guys. Okay, so assignment-wise, it's important that you identify from your defensive coordinator, right, or from your offensive coordinator, right, what the assignment is and what you're trying to do because it then leads to what different types of techniques that you're going to utilize, right? As a young coach when I was in high school, right, I thought, oh, I'm going to have, you know, 10 to 12 different types of techniques of how we're going to handle a certain situation, right? Well, later on in my career, I, I, I shortly found out, like, hey, let's just focus on one or two or three, right, that we can hang our hat on, right, and that we can perfect that and then go from there and then ultimately let the guys just kind of play, okay? And then obviously the finished component of everything, okay? So, again, I go through this teaching progression even, right, when I started in high school, even when I was at the FCS level, FCS level, even uh, at the FBS level, okay? So, again, these are the different types of stances, right? I got a hold-up stance, right? I got my attack stance, right? I got a three-point run stance where my flat, where my back is flat. And then I got a, a, a three-point or a four-point where my butt is slightly above, right? And then each of these stances, then going in detail, right? Right, of the little nuances of, hey, you want to go shoulder width apart, slightly bending the knees, right, of giving them good examples of why you'd want to get into this position here, right? And each of these positions or these stances, right, uh, and, I, and I, I teach it from a standpoint where you need to try to generate power from the ground up. So there's a reason why I'm in a two-point, my foot, my feet are flat. There's a reason why I'm in a two-point, I'm in a staggered stance, where I got all my weight on my front foot, right, so on and so on. 
Uh, and it's the same thing where I can teach the same progression. There's a reason why I'm on a flat back, right, in my run three-point stance of why I'm in that position there to, so I can generate power from the ground up, okay? Moving on. Again, this is my alignment deal, right? And then again, what I do, uh, every defensive coordinator that I've been a part of, I say, hey, let's get on the same page. Let's get on the same uh, message, right? What is your alignment, right? So at UCLA, this is what our alignments are. And again, some of it is very similar. Some of it is it varies when you start to get to uh, a three-man surface, okay? So the way I teach it is, right, um, everything head up is, a, is an even number. Uh, and everything shaded to a side is an odd number besides the rule breaker, which is the four eye. So again, that's just the way I teach it. And that's the way I explain it to the young men, All right? And then I have the three different types of alignment, a tight alignment, a wide alignment, or air five. Or sometimes I say, hey, you're on a tight three, right? Or you're on a wide three, right? Or you're in an air five. <clears throat> just making sure that they understand, right? Which we all know, right? Alignment, just getting them aligned up is kind of half of the battle, okay? So kind of just explaining to them, right, the difference of the three, right, explaining them to them, right, obviously the alignments, and then obviously explaining to them since they, they should know since Pop Warner, obviously A gap, B gap. But again, as a coach, right, never assume. So that's why I'm trying to not assume that we all know these types of things. I just want to make sure I present it to you guys and show you guys how I tie everything in, okay? <clears throat> right, so this is just an example, right, of assignments. Right, and obviously Bama, Cowboy, uh, Gold, it could be different names, but basically what are your defensive calls, right? Or it could be what are your offensive calls, right? And then showing to them, right? A lot of young men are very visual, right? Showing to them what the example looks like and what verbiage and what terms are associated with it, associated with that defensive call, okay? Okay, so these are all the different techniques that are associated with that, just with that one defensive call, okay? So with that being said, when you can start to get into your drills, right, I'm going to know prior to hitting the field, hey, coach, we're going to be working on this defensive call. Well, you know the coach likes this defensive call to these certain formations. Well, what are the most common techniques that you're most likely going to be utilizing, okay? So, for example, I'm just going to take one, which is solid technique, right? This is something that we just barely implemented, right, uh, into our defense, right? I have a good explanation of it, right? Solid technique is a two gap, right? I'm working primary to secondary gap, right? I'm always going to be in a wide alignment, whether I'm a defensive end on either side or outside linebacker on either, either side, right? So a wide alignment, meaning, right, I'm going to be a foot-to-foot -foot type of alignment, whether it's with the tackle or with it with the tight end, okay? Um, going into the solid technique is, hey, my first step, right, and I'm always going to start from the ground up. My first step is going to be a short, quick step to the inside of the offensive lineman or the uh, offensive uh, offender, okay, because it could be used, solid technique could be used versus a tight end or versus a tackle, okay. My visual key, right, is always the tip of the shoulder pad, whether it's a tight end or a tackle, okay. I'm, I need to see the visual key as well as see the angle of departures because it's going to tell me right, how I'm going to engage with that offensive lineman or that offensive uh, or the tight end, right? And again, remember, this is a two-gap principle, right? So I'm working primary to secondary, and I have some film on it, which I'm going to touch up on, okay? And then, right, where's my hand placement, right? So my hand placement is, which I describe to my players, right? I have the breastplate that's sitting here, right, if, I'm have, if I have shoulder pads on. In this area right here where the armpit is at, right, I call it the pit area. Right, the via the neck because it's come down this way here. Right, I call it the the choke area. Right, so again, I, I just quickly define it so that way it's it's described to the players like, hey, where's my hand placement hand placement's gonna go? So as you can see there on the PowerPoint, I have the double pit area. So I'm obviously gonna be shooting my hands into the double pit area, thumbs up, elbows in tight. Right, so I can get a hold of the steering wheel. Okay, steering wheel basically those areas that I described. Right. This part of the steering wheel, the double pit area, right? And obviously the upper part of the steering wheel, which is the choke area, okay? And again, just I would list through, hey, these are the techniques, right? And this, the defense, right? This is, you're most likely going to be using this technique based off of what my visual key is going to tell me to do, okay? So just solid technique, right? Uh, part of the, the learning progression, right, teaching progression, right, is the finished component of everything, which we all know, right, and I think it's something that, you, that we have to practice in our drills and don't just wait for a specific time frame to practice these things here, 
okay? So in our drills, right, I'm gonna always try to practice, hey, a violent escape, right? And it's a rip or a swim, right? Sometimes I say arm over, but again, these are the only two escapes that I'm gonna be practicing and I harp on it over and over and over again. Okay, and then obviously pursuit, run to the ball, right? We define it as crossing two. If the ball is going horizontal, right, then you gotta cross, you got you have to cross two landmarks, which would be the hash marks and the numbers, right? If the ball is going down vertical, right, then you need to cross two lines. And I tell them, right, that you should be sprinting and then throttling it down, right? But to get a good five to ten yard burst and then throttle it down. Okay, so again, that's vertical or horizontal as far as crossing two or in our pursuit. Uh, uh, where the ball carrier is going, okay? And then obviously a tackle, everybody teaches tackle differently, right? So again, depending on what your defensive coordinator, um, uh, how you guys want to tackle. We, uh, here at UCLA, we're into the, the rugby type of tackling, okay? And I can go into a little bit more in depth in those, okay? All right, so just identifying drills to run, okay? So again, I'm going to try to tie everything back again, right? Know the scheme, right? Know the de defensive coordinator's expectations, Right. And then from that point, right, create a plan of action. So, again, we all know sometimes if you're an outside linebacker because you have so many things going on or if you're a linebacker, right, you're part of seven on seven. Right. Your individual drill gets cut short. Right. If you're a defensive lineman. Right. Or defensive coach, uh, D line coach. Right. You may end up having 30 to 40 minutes of individual drills. Right. But again, it's just going back into and identifying, OK, in these certain situations, coach wants us to spill the ball. In these situations, coach wants us to leverage the ball, right? In these situations, I'm going to talk about the solid technique because I have the film on that, right? We're going to work on solid technique, right? So, again, these drills, right, based on the te techniques that I'm going to be using is very different. And I will only use it based on um, – if I go back to this screen here, right? Uh, I'll only use it based on what the menu that we're going to have for that week because sometimes going into – a certain week, right, coach, we're not going to be spilling the ball as much as, or as much as often, right, or we're not going to be boxing the ball. So we're not going to spend as much time on those drills throughout the week. So then that way I can coordinate it in my plan of action, right, in my plan of action of what we're going to be doing. So when I talked about earlier, right, identifying and knowing what drills to run, right, versus my everyday drill versus my technique drills that I need to focus on leading up for in, in your team segments and stuff. Okay, and so just creating those list of drills that I need to focus on, okay? These are my everyday drills, and the way I do it is, this is, I'm doing this before practice, okay? And it's a nice, quick shot, right? Um, obviously, I have a younger group, so I had to take a little bit more time in my individual drills itself to teach them these drills here. But again, these are drills, I tell them, if we don't have practice that day, right, you should be doing or finding time to do these drills. Right. And these are some of the most common drills, obviously, for any uh, defense alignment. Right. Your six point drill. Right. Just working on your get offs and all the different types of footwork that you will need in your get offs. Right. Changing the angle direction or changing the angle of departure. Right. Um, running the hoops every day. Right. And just the hand to hand uh, combat. Right. And then obviously just working on quick feet and ladders and stuff. OK. So, again, these are my everyday drills. And then, like I said, these are done before practice. And then in practice, I'm going to be working on, right, all the different types of techniques, right, in those drills. So in that way, they, you know, correlate to uh, whatever the script is for uh, that day in practice. If you're doing uh, play action pass, if you're doing third downs, so on and so on, whatever it may be that you guys are working on in, in your script and stuff, okay? So just real fast, I'm going to switch over to uh, my film here. Coach, I don't know. If you can allow me to be the host on my other um, device here. Again, I apologize. Bear with me. Um, all right, perfect. Let me see if I can share the screen here. Can you make this one the host, this device? And let me. Okay. Did you make this one the, the device, Coach? Sorry, sorry, I was muted. Is it a different laptop? Yes, it's a, it's another uh, it's an iPad. Oh yeah, uh, I'm not sure we can do that. Yeah. Could you make this one? Um, yeah, we you'd have to you'd have to sign in with that one. So it, it's on right now. I don't know if you can see my other. 
Uh, let me see. See if I can find it here. Oh, I did notice you had two. Uh... All right, go ahead and try it, Coach. He should be able to share it. You should okay. be able to share it on your iPad, Coach. Okay, one sec. All right, perfect. Okay, so just screen, broadcast. All right, can you guys see my screen here? Yes. All right, I'm going to shut my, my laptop over here. All right, so that way you don't get any echoing. Probably shouldn't have done that because now he's he, we can't hear him unless. Well. Coach, can you hear me now? There yes, we, go. we can hear you. Okay, perfect. Okay, so again, <clears throat> this is solid technique. Okay, so again, all the everyday drills obviously going to be different from obviously your technique drills that you're going to be implementing during your uh, individual drills and stuff. Okay, um, during practice. Okay, so solid technique came about right. Um, obviously, we hired uh, Brian Norwood, who came from Navy. Um, you know, he was introducing some new things. And there was one technique specifically that I loved, right? And I thought, hey, we could probably benefit from this here, okay? So I just wanted to pull it and then we show you guys some clips of it, okay? So, so what we're going to be looking at here is, right, number 96, okay? So, again, this is solid technique. This is the one I was talking about. Hey, this is a two-gap technique, okay? So, number one, right, this is his primary gap here, right? Number two, this would be his secondary gap here, right? The other teaching point to this one is going to be, right, I want to take a quick short step. My alignment is going to be obviously a foot-to-foot -foot alignment, right? My first step is going to be a short, quick step. Sometimes it could be more than a three-inch. Sometimes it could be more than a six-inch step, right? But regardless of that, right, my eyes and my keys and my visual key is the tip of the shoulder pad. I'm waiting to see what the angle of departure is going to be with the offense alignment, okay? So I'm just going to take you guys from the first part of it, identifying what solid technique looks like, and then how we're going to try to get to it into our individual drills and stuff, okay? So just take a quick look, right? Tight hands inside, right? You see how he continues to work across to get into that B-gap area, right? Getting that extension where he has the ability of, hey, I'm in my primary gap, and then I'm gonna look back into if the ball punches back out to, the, to my secondary gap. So you'll see very quickly here, right? Again, quick step, tight hands, right? Eyes inside, sees the mess point. Right, and then obviously he can do a little bit better job of obviously working on the release, but he gets the idea where he goes to primary and then he comes back into secondary gap responsibility. Okay, so again, primary gap here, that's the gap he's responsible for, and then he has the freedom to come back into his secondary gap here. Okay. Okay, so trying to create that, how, how can we do that, right? So again, I have a few sleds, a few pop-up bags of just getting the idea. Right, so again, just trying to create that same action, short quick step to the inside, right? Just so we're all on the same page, I, I have a really young group of outside linebackers, right? And I have about four of them that came in mid-year, right? So again, as you kind of see through film and stuff, this is all new, this is an introduction, right? The technique is new for me as well, right? So just trying to get them all on the same page, right? And understanding, so you're gonna see some bad you know, not shooting his hands and, you know, some bad footwork, so on and so on, okay? But I wanted you guys to see it so you guys can see the progression of it. This is, we had three days of spring ball, right? Uh, we had uh, two days, obviously, no pads, and then the third day we had some pads on. So you kind of see the progression and kind of see them kind of get a little bit better, right? But again, I'm, in, I'm emphasizing in my uh, individual drills during practice, right, of solid technique, okay? So... <clears throat> Again, just having them come up there, shooting their hands, right? And then continue to work across. So you can see their outside shade of the bag and then they're working across, right? And obviously the idea is, right, to get them to work across with their eyes inside. So you can kind of see me, hey, I'm gonna give some numbers and stuff, right? Get their eyes up inside, keep them moving across, 
Okay. And again, just to keep their feet apart, don't click the heels. Those are some of the just little uh, small coaching points, right? I shouldn't see my helmet hit the sled, <clears throat> right? My hands should be right inside, right? The double pit area and then working back across. Okay. So that's just kind of a deal, right? I also kind of get them going right in a three point stance, right? Cause I do have some outside linebackers, some defensive ends, right? that are going to be in a three point stance. They're going to have to be working it. Okay. So again, now we're obviously in the day three here. This is just another way, right, to help them, right? A couple of coaching points here is I have the bag up against the wall. I have the handles turned out to them, right? Because I'm working on grabbing cloth, right? Shooting my hands in, into the breastplate, okay? So <clears throat> there, right? And then obviously continue to work on. I got to get, get their feet moving across, okay? It looks like you cut me short on the last one here. Okay, but again, just trying to get the handles turned to the outside would be the coaching point, right? And then really working on it as I'm grabbing cloth, right? And then I'm going across. So this is day three, right? We got some pads on, right? And you should see a little bit of improvement, right? But again, these are the types of things where I got to continue to work on, right? Because our solid technique, we plan to utilize it um, in a lot of our defensive uh, calls, okay? So again, just depending on um, hands, feet, right, where you can kind of see getting their eyes up. Okay, so now we're going to start to see tra uh, transition over, okay. So, again, this position here, this position here, they have their own specific rules, obviously, uh, depending on the defense that we're using or that, that, that is called. Okay, so you can take a look at number 55 over here, right. <clears throat> His alignment, right, early on we were kind of messing around with things, right, again, your initial alignment should be, right, a foot to foot, right? We ended up changing it, right? Again, this is a new technique, so I want to kind of mess around and kind of see what we can do, right? But again, what I would do going back, right, I would move his alignment back out where I would go with foot to foot, okay? But again, just angle departure, right? Quickly get my eyes and sides showing color to the inside, and then he would have the freedom to go ahead and move to the outside. Okay, solid technique to a three-man surface. Right, I'm talking to the boundary side over here to number 45. Right, his visual key would be the tight end. Okay, doesn't need to perform it. Okay, we're looking to the field side, number 55, solid technique again. Right, that's a good picture here where he actually gets inside to it. Right, one of the coaching points would be I'm um, to the inside, and at this point right here, right, then obviously you'd work on your escape, right. Either once you see the ball given, work on your escape and go make the play or continue to hold the point of attack. So that way, if the ball does punch out to the outside over here, we become an extra defender, which would be our secondary gap. OK. So taking a look at here, number 25 to the boundary side. So, again, just slowly working across. Right. And getting my hat and hands to the inside to my primary gap responsibility. Right, um, 55 and 25 should be performing solid technique. Okay, obviously I don't like how number 25 is obviously cocking his elbows back. He's one of my freshmen that came in mid-year. He's from uh, Georgia, All right? So we'll continue to work on six points. Six points should help clean that up, All right? But I do love this hand placement inside, All right? And then here's the primary gap responsibility where he has the C gap and then he comes back out to the D gap for an to be an extra defender off of it. Okay, and then 55, obviously, working his way inside. He's a junior, uh, should help us uh, start this year, okay? Let's see, solid technique number 45 over here to the left side. Okay, so you can kind of see just that movement over here, working inside. Right, striking with my hands. I love to see a little bit uh, lower pad level. He's a JC transfer. I just got him here um, uh, mid-year as well, right? Obviously, he's got to work on a better clean release, right? And then continue to get him into a football position where he's sinking his hips just a little bit more lower. Okay. I think that this is the last clip here, or maybe a two more of just solid technique. Right? So ideally, you'd love to see number 45 here to the left side. Right, stay in it a little bit longer because that's his primary gap, 
right? Number 26 is assuming that obviously he's, he's has that C gap and he's got it uh, secured, right? Right, a little bit too early. Okay. So that's kind of the solid technique. So let me just get back into this. Can you guys see me? Coach, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we got you, coach. Okay, perfect. Okay, so again, just kind of showing you guys, right? You have your everyday drills, right? Uh, and then, hey, I just took one one technique, which was, was a, which was a solid technique. And then what I'm doing during practice to obviously help those young men to obviously do it in the indie drill, right? And then let it transfer over to, um, you know, a team segment and stuff. Okay, and then again, there was some other stuff too, as far as just doing the solid technique that I've done before, whether it's, if you don't have bags, you don't have sleds, possibly because of obviously what's going on right now, right? I'll just have somebody stand there, right? And hold his hands up. Um, I've also created just another little mechanism or equipment that you can utilize. Um, so then that way you can still continue to practice um, that same technique and stuff. Okay, so uh, what I wanna do now is just go ahead and then open up to uh, any Q and A questions that you guys might have. Um, hopefully some of that information was helpful and useful. Uh, that you guys can, uh, you know, utilize it and apply it into whether some of your defensive scheme and stuff. So go ahead. Uh, if there's any other questions that you guys might have. Great, Coach. Hey, thank, thank you. It's good. Uh, yeah, guys, if you have any, uh, any questions, just uh, use the chat function and uh, we'll see that. I do see one coach, uh, Coach Bruner asks, how are you fitting the inside linebacker behind so I'm assuming the question is about the uh, solid technique. Yeah. So I don't know if I, if you saw me or I may have answered it when we were watching the film is his primary gap is going to be the inside. And again, it could be the B gap or the C gap, depending on a two man or three man surface or when our defense is uh, utilizing that solid technique. And obviously the inside linebacker or the linebacker behind him, right. is going to be flowing to the outside. So primary gap would be the B gap, right. And he would be fitting outside to the C gap. Okay, so so not reading any backfield. Another question is, are uh, the inside linebackers reading backs to line or line to backs? Line to backs. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna screen share something real fast here and I'll, and I'll draw it up real fast. One second, Coach, so I can answer that question here. Sure. So hang tight with me. Okay. Everybody can see this screen here. Yeah, we're, uh, let me see. I think so, yeah. Okay, perfect, all right. So, oh, that's a little bit too big here, all right? But let me just draw some offense alignment here. All right, so again, I'm looking at this position here, right? So this is my primary gap right here, obviously the B gap. And I'm talking about this guy here. So he's gonna do his technique here, work to this side over here, right? This backer over here knows that he's working here and he's looking from, right? Obviously the lines of the backfield, depending on how you guys teach this concept here, whether it's the triangle, obviously to the running back, right? But his key is there, obviously if it's his own concept, right? And obviously we're just one gap. If it's one back, it's one gap, right? He takes care of this gap over here. He knows that he's got to flow to this side or to the outside. Obviously it's the full flow, right? Going to this side over here, depending on where the back is at, right? And then we're running everybody to the backside and we would gain him on anything coming back to the backside. Again, it's all going to be, uh, it's all going to vary on how you guys want to fit everything, right? So again, this is just, a, again, it's a solid technique um, that we just, uh, we liked what Navy was doing with it, and we're just going to try to implement it in some of our defensive stuff. So did that help? Did that answer your question on the fits and stuff like that? Yeah, that's good, Coach. Appreciate okay. it. Let me see. Um, uh, we, we got a – can you see that, Coach? Or coach just Coach Jackson? Yep, yep, uh, I, I can see it. Yep, so I'm going to answer this one here. Mainly out of your 30 front defenses, what, what is your preferred edge technique versus runaway or RPO, and how do you mix it up uh, by game plan, right? So, again, 30 front depend – again, a 30 front to me, right, so we're on the same page, is a 505. Sometimes a 30 front could be a 4, right, uh, zero four. Okay, so depending on – because again, you can use you can use a solid technique. Um, I, I I just call your normal uh, edge technique, which you're seeing the, um, the tackle, right? And I'm gonna switch it over real fast. So I can explain a little bit better on the screen here. Okay, one sec. Okay. 
Okay. Can everybody see my screen? Coach, can you see my screen? Yeah, we got you. Yep. Okay. Again, 30 front, depending on how, how you define it and how you describe it, right? To be something like this, right? Where I'm in a five, zero, five alignment, and I'm in a wide alignment, meaning I'm in a foot to foot, right? So again, depending on how you see fit, right? Number one, if I wanted to use solid technique, right? Then obviously I know I'm gonna gap these ones out here, right? If I just wanna use my normal technique and there is no solid technique, right? Then my man key, my visual key is still gonna be the same guy, right? But I know that I'm gonna hold leverage to the outside. Then it turns back into, okay, right? What's the blocking spider look like, right? If you get reached, right, he's gonna set the edge. If he's down this way, I'm off his ass, right? If I get a pass set, right, then I'm pass rushing to the outside, right? So again, I, I just call that a normal set. So when I say set technique, they know who's my man key, right? It's this guy right here, right? So depending on how he plays it, right? If he's down inside, I know I'm going down to die, right? Set, right? Well, he reached, right? I know I got to set the edge, okay? Hopefully that helped kind of uh, explain that front, right? Did that yeah. help you out with that one there? I, I can't see who. Uh, yeah, that's good. Oh, uh, Jackson see. there. Right, and then again, that's gonna help you with your RPO fits and your run fits. Am I a B gap defender or am I a C gap defender? Right, obviously in most situations, being a 505 and a 30 front, we like them on the outside, playing our normal set rules. So then that way he's in that C gap window, right? When the guy, when the quarterback obviously is reading, um, when we're reading the mesh point and the quarterback is reading us, right? And whether he decides to pull the ball, to run a quick little slant, hitch route, whatever on the outside for their RPO game, okay? Um, the next question, did I help uh, answer your question there, Dave? I hope it did. Um, on the tackle foot foot alignment, if the DN goes wide outside, does the tackle go wide with him or stay and protect his gap? Let me see if I answer uh, if I understand that question co correctly. So that's maybe tackle. maybe uh, maybe reach. I think you just you just drew it. I think and that's on that uh, screen share. I think you might be talking about a reach block. Yeah. So again, like I said, it, if I'm working set technique right, and he's trying to reach me, I'm getting vertical. And I tell him, it should be a train wreck, right? You should be a knockback, and you should be getting vertical off of it. Tight hands inside, same thing. Keep my outside hand free. Okay, hand placements, right? I can go through all that in detail, right? Um, if you're working solid technique, it's the same thing. You want to get reached, right? And then you're going to be naturally fitting to the inside, right? So, again, I'm not too sure which question you wanted that uh, related to as far as technique-wise, if it's solid or a set technique, Okay. Um, so yeah, so if I'm, I'm assuming, right, Brandon is asking, do you feel that this will make you slow on pass rush? Yes, it will, right? So again, it's your normal four eye technique and you're asking him to go from inside gap to the outside gap, right? So it's the same thing where, right, just kind of um, helping him out, right, get a little bit of width, right? So that way he sees the angle of departure if he gets a pass set, right? His first step's gonna be inside there, right? We got, he's gotta work back to the outside to contain everything. That's on a solid technique. If you're working set technique, right, he, no matter what, right, depending on his visual key and what the tackle does, right, he should be getting vertical off of everything. Okay. Okay, we've got a question. Uh, what is that from Coach Harvey? Uh, uh, tight front. You see that one, Coach? Uh, I'm scrolling down. I don't see it, Coach. Yeah, uh, Corey. Coach, coach in the four-eye tight front. Yes. What alignment, tight or wide, and keys of the defensive ends. Yes, yeah, so, so, yeah, one sec. I will – let me screen share this and I'll go over it. Right, and obviously the outside linebackers are out of that picture there when we're into a, a tight front, right? I've, we've called it different things, a stealer front. I mean, you name it. So, everybody see my screen? Yes. Okay, so let me just erase this here. Okay. Let's get us a front here. Okay, so four eyes, okay? And we're looking like this, right? And, and again, sometimes I just say, hey, four zero four, right? And again, the boys know, hey, they should be getting into basically four eyes, right? If I want to go ahead and give them head up alignments, right, I'll tell them, hey, this week in Steeler front, we're going to be playing head up in our um, uh, tight front or Steeler front, okay? So his visual key, right? is the inside tip of the shoulder pad of the offensive tackle. Again, this is the way I teach it, right? 
right, wrong, or indifferent, right? This is the, just the way I teach it, and I, I found success with it, right? His tip of the, um, so his, um, here, let me go through again, right? Stance is going to be in a flat back stance, right? Shoulder width apart, right? With my man, with my man hand down, meaning, right, if I'm covering this side, right, then my left hand is going to be down to this side over here, right? With the flat back based off of the stances and stuff like that, right? Alignment, obviously, is going to be a four eye, right? And in his alignment, right, he will be a foot to foot deal. Right, because obviously the worst thing that could happen to us is obviously getting reached and getting cut out of that B gap over here. Right, so we want to make sure that we secure the B gap off of it. Right, in in this visual key look, right, as obviously I'm going to go off the blocking spider. Right, and again, the blocking spider to me ends up being a picture that looks just like this. Right, where you're getting a reach block, cut off block. Right, I'm getting the pull to the side over here. I'm getting the pass it over here. Right, it could be a base block, so on and so on. Right, so again. My visual key is going to be the tip of the shoulder pad, right? I am not looking at this guy. Some guys or some coaches will obviously, hey, go ahead and key the offensive guard. I find that very difficult from his alignment to obviously have a visual key of his tip of the shoulder pad. So I'm looking at the tip of the shoulder pad of this offensive tackle to the inside, right? So, again, based off his angle departure, that's what's going to tell me, right? And the same hand placements will be as if I was playing solid technique out over here. Right, I want my hands double pit to the inside, so I make sure I have a hold of the steering wheel. Okay, does that kind of answer your question there? Yeah, that's good. Great, great, uh, great explanation that there. That's perfect. Thank you. Okay, and then again, he's a B gap defender, and I'll go back to the same thing as a pass rush. When you're pass rushing from a four eye, right, you're going to be laid off of it, right, come pushing the pocket here and then back to the outside. It's the same thing with the the, the solid technique. I'm here, right, and then I'm back to the outside. So the way the solid technique even, or evolved was, well, hey, how about let's move this guy and let's move him to the outside, right? And we'll do the same technique where he's two gap in here, two gap in here, right? Well, let's just do the same thing, right? But now we're gonna move him to a five alignment. So then that way in our presentation and in our disguise, right? They don't know if we're playing solid technique or if we're playing just regular set, uh, you know, set technique, okay? Good, good. Let's see what we got, uh, Coach Walker. Maybe uh, long stick. Biggest issue yep. with long stick. Turning your hips. So again, I'll go back to. Um, let me screen share this again. Do you long stick? Yep, I still long stick all of that. Okay, let me see when we bring them into a four eye or even to a three technique based on what type of fronts that we're moving into, right? the footwork is going to be a little bit different. But if I'm long sticking from a five technique, right, let me close this here and I'll show you uh, my quick explanation of this. Okay, hang tight, bear with me. Let me erase this here. Okay, just so we're all on the same page. Right, so long sticking meaning Right, I'm going to two gap transfer. I'm going all the way down over here. That's my that's my understanding of a, of a long stick, right? And if you don't know what a long stick is, right, I consider it a two gap transfer. Okay, so, just so we're all on the same page of those who might not know. Okay, whether it's the defensive end or even the outside linebacker, if we're bringing pressure, right, and we want the outside linebacker or the defensive end, right, to two gap transfer, right? Meaning, right, I'm going from the C gap all the way down to the A gap. Okay, so again, right, I'm going to break it down here. Right, so. The biggest issue for me, right, is obviously when I get my footwork going and I'm going all the way down, I teach them to go ahead and turn their toes, right, to the aiming point of where the center is at here, right? So, again, man hand down, right? So my right hand is going to be down. My first step is going to be with my right foot. As I pick up my right foot, right, I'm going to turn, go ahead and turn the toes. And depending on whether you use a long stick in a run or a pass is going to obviously going to be a little bit different as well. Right, because if it's run, I know I need to get down to the A gap right now. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my toes. And if I turn my toes, right, my hips are going to be turned this way here. Right. So you just got to understand that. Right. So with the biggest issue of this happening here is as I continue to turn my toes this way, my hips are turned this way. Right. And I get caught. Right. My hips are this way. Right. It's easy for them just to go ahead and wash me out. Right. So again, I tell them to turn my toes, get down here. And as I work this way, I got to get. Uh, get ready to turn my my foot to get it back vertical so if I do get caught right I can put the pressure back onto and I don't get washed so I don't know if that kind of makes a little bit of sense so what happened over time was a lot of coaches like well how about we just move this guy here 
right? So then that way we can do a one gap transfer or a slant uh, movement. Slant meaning, right, if I have this look here, and I need to nose the slant from this side to this side, right? My first step is gonna be, right, with my right foot, but my toes are gonna be pointed this direction here. Why? So then that way my hips are gonna be in this direction here. So if, we, if I do get caught and I get caught with pressure, right, and I fight the pressure back, my hips are still square to the line of scrimmage, right? It's old school rule, which we've been taught at a young age, right? You always want to stay square to the line of scrimmage. So I'm always going to try to keep my hips square to the line of scrimmage. Well, how do I keep my hips square to the line of scrimmage, right? Well, I got to work on my footwork and keep my toes pointed. So a lot of times, depending on if it's pass, I always teach them where I'm going this direction here, and I'm going to first step here, and then I'm going to take my second step here, right? So I call it kind of a, a, a skate technique for here, where – I'm going to continue to keep my hips, right, pointed in this direction. I'm, so I, that way I keep it, right, square to the line of scrimmage here. Okay. I don't know. Does that help kind of explain? Yeah, that was good. I like that. Okay. Uh, let's, 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 take, uh, let's take one more, Coach. We've got some time here. Uh, let me see. I see one um, uh, rushing three. What, what's, uh, how do you teach your pass rush? when you're only rushing three. Uh, okay, so. You, you got you, some thoughts on that one. Yeah, one sec, let me share that screen again and I'll kind of explain it again and draw it up for you guys. Sorry, excuse me, let me see, get this thing here. Okay. So, right, when you're only rushing three, right, we obviously we, we want to box everything. And again, it, it all kind of depends on the defensive coordinators and what windows do you want open. Right, so, right, do you want to give up the B-gap windows or do you want to give up the C-gap windows, right? It could be the same thing with A-gap windows. How do you want to collapse the pocket, okay? And, again, based on the scheme, based on the D&D &D and stuff like that, right, usually when I set everything up, let me see here, right, if this was the field to this side over here, I had this guy rush wide. Right. If this was the boundary side to this side over here, right, I tell him he can power move it and he can push him this way. That way, right, we can flush the quarterback going to this side over here or to the boundary side. And obviously the nose is just going to push the pocket and try to mirror it to keep the quarterback in the box. OK, so that's one way to do things or how to handle the situation. OK, the next way, like I said, right, is how do you want to or what windows are you willing to give up based on the coverages and stuff like that? Okay, so again, if I'm sitting in this position here, right, I can bull rush it this way, bull rush it this way. I can relax him, right, knowing that obviously I can help help that way, and I can also have help this way, depending on what the coverage is and stuff. Okay, and this this the, this guy, that backer or the safety or nickel guy is going to be a late rusher to it, right? So then that way I know that I should close out any of these a gap to b gap windows with these power move rushes here. Okay. And again, it's going to go back into the same thing of, hey, now let's really collapse the pocket, right, where we can have some guys go up and then we can have them come inside so then that way we can get these guys on different levels, right? Same thing. You can put a smaller guy here, somebody that can run, that can track guys down, right? And again, it's all going to depend on what, what situation and based off of what the defense coordinator wants within that specific call and knowing, hey, if it's a third and long situation, if it's a third and five situation, right, how we're going to handle all these different situations here, okay, and it'll be the same thing here where we can go up and we can go in, right, and we can send the nose to the field side, right, and then we can have the backer based off of coverage, he's going to be, right, a green dog guy or a late guy or a uh, late addition guy to it, okay. Does that help uh, answer the question there for just some ideas for three-man rushes? That's good. That's good. Really good, Coach. Okay, let me close this one here. Okay, and again, I don't know if you guys saw my, if you guys got my contact information uh, from the last slide that I had there. Um, I'm an open book. You know, football's football. I, I think what it comes down to is schematics. You can draw up whatever you want to draw up. It, it all comes down to what the defensive coordinator is going to call that you have a good feel of what he's going to call so that way you can help your players out in, in that situation to get them, you know, in a situation or in a better situation to make plays off of those. So... Appreciate it, Coach. Thank you very much. I know uh, I know you're very busy, and uh, we appreciate you coming on here. At all. Uh, love the way you explain uh, that stuff. I've got a bunch of notes here I took myself, and 
and uh, hand placement and and uh, angle of departure. All those things are things that you know I think we need as coaches to go over every day. Uh, it's it's not something you can talk about. You got you got to really rep it. You know, so uh, love the way you guys do that. Appreciate you, Coach Kafusi, uh, UCLA. How's uh, how's everything going to UCLA these days? How are you guys doing? Yeah, hey, I can't complain. You know, we're just everything's all predicated off of what the government's going to tell us. Obviously, the the governor, and then from the governor, right, to see what our chancellor says, and then from there, uh, we're hoping to get back on the field here shortly. But we'll know within the next two weeks. Um, you know, if we can get back together, uh, obviously as a team, obviously with all the CDC guidelines and stuff like that. But hey, you can't complain. It's LA. You, know, you get the sunshine all the time. You got the beaches not too far away, so we're good. All right. <laughs> Always recruiting. I got you. I feel you. That's good. Absolutely. <laughs> all right. Hey, you got you, uh, you. You have a great day, Coach. I appreciate you coming on. Uh, as fantastic uh, of session, and um, I'm sure guys will try to reach out to you, and, and uh, we'll connect some coaches and and keep talking ball. Thanks, Coach. I appreciate you. Yep. Thank you. Hey, appreciate you guys. Stay safe. Right. Stay healthy. All right. Take care.